October 14th, 1990, at an undisclosed location high above the Washington, D.C. area, at a height that is still classified, in a plane that is still classified, a group of Tier 1 Special Operations soldiers prepare for a parachute drop. But this is a mission that no one has ever attempted before. A mission that will test the limits of two important organizations and be a powerful lesson to one of them. This mission will forever change the security of one of our nation's most symbolic and important buildings. The operation remained classified from the public until 2019. Make sure to hold your position, grab a beverage, and learn about this secret mission, some details of which still remain classified even today. In 1990, Louis Merletti was assigned to the Presidential Protection Detail of the Secret Service, and his concern for the safety of his protective assets was always on his mind. Lou Merletti took his assignment with his years of experience, including being with the Special Forces in the Vietnam War, very seriously. He was always looking for any gaps in the security of the Presidential Detail. His service in the Vietnam War was as a Special Forces combat medic, and he earned several military honors and medals, including the Bronze Star. Lou was quoted as saying to the Justice Department concerning his position in the Secret Service, the assassination of the President of the United States is, quite literally, a cataclysmic event in world history. It is also the worst possible incident that can occur on the Secret Service's watch. For this reason, it is the practice of the Secret Service to review and assess all assassination attempts wherever and whenever they occur. Lou's boss started a discussion between the two of them, and they produced an idea to really test the Secret Service's protection detail of the president. Lou was asked if he still had contacts with the Special Forces, and he stated he still did. Lou went to Fort Bragg, and he had a meeting with the commander of the 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, commonly called Delta Force. If you do not know who Delta Force is, here is a summary. Delta Force is what is called a Tier 1 unit in Special Operations. They are highly trained and must pass an extensive and grueling selection process. Delta has carried out numerous missions, many of which still remain classified. The operators in Delta are some of the best trained in the world. They carry out missions in counterterrorism, protection details, and hostage rescues, and this is just a start. A challenge was presented to Delta. Conduct a small footprint ambush that would be devastating to the White House. Delta Force was more than happy to try, but they did have some ground rules. Delta could not use their secret clearance for information on planning the ambush. In the planning and recon stage, they can only use information and gather details from publicly available sources. If the Delta guys got caught in the line for a White House tour, Merletti was quoted as saying, it's a point for us. Delta wasted no time on producing an AOP, or Attack on Principle, ambush on the White House. The recon and information gathering began to find the weak links in the armor of the Secret Service security detail. The operators in Delta began training for the mission, which took six to eight weeks. Maga and Merletti were given no idea of the plan, and the day came to carry out the mission. Delta's plan was to halo, or high altitude low opening, parachute right onto the White House's lawn. This simulated an attack by would-be assassins, who would then infiltrate the White House and carry on with whatever a terrorist attack would be. On October 14, 1990, the Delta operators loaded up into the aircraft, which is still classified, and began their flight towards the White House. Halo jumps are performed at heights anywhere from 15,000 feet to 30,000 feet, and then opening the parachute at the last possible safe altitude. This helps eliminate radar signatures, and the operators are trained to the point of being able to land on small target areas. The Secret Service on duty around the White House had their live ammunition taken away for safety. Of course, they knew something was going to happen, but they had no idea the approach Delta would take. President Bush was taken to Camp David before this exercise took place, and Merletti waited for the ambush which he had no idea of the exact time or the methods to be used. As the aircraft flew into position for the operators to launch into the night, Delta did their last minute checks and prepared to do something that had never been attempted before. The lights of Washington DC glimmered below them, the air cold and crisp. Then it was go time. They jumped out of the aircraft 
and began their descent toward their target, the White House. The operators wore masks hooked up to small oxygen tanks because of the lack of breathable air at the higher altitudes, and in their extensive halo training, they learned how to control their breathing to conserve what air they did have. The lights of Washington, D.C. got closer. The operators checked their altitude gauges. It was time to deploy their chutes. They jolted as the parachutes opened above them. At this point, the Delta operators steered themselves towards the White House. Without breaking the stillness and quiet of the night, they descended on the target, the White House's lawn. Their mission was accomplished. The score? Delta Force 1 and Secret Service 0. One Secret Service agent on the roof was quoted as saying, All of a the sudden, there were these Delta guys on the lawn. It was a holy <laughs> moment for everybody. The defenses of the White House had been breached, and many lessons were learned that night. The Secret Service had a direct, dedicated phone line to the National Airport nearby, which would give them any alerts to suspicious aircraft off flight paths or projected headings to the White House. The phone never rang. This remains classified as to how Delta pulled that off. One response to this mock incursion was the installation of a Doppler radar patched to the Secret Service's control room. Delta did another mock raid onto the White House using Halo parachuting again, but this time the Doppler radar did its job and gave the Secret Service the warning, Delta coming through the air. In Lou Merletti's office hung a picture that one of the Delta operators took with the first mock mission. It was an infrared picture of one of the Delta guys still in his parachute harness landing on the White House lawn. Lou made a special note on this picture, no comment. This mission was kept secret for many years, with details remaining classified, and shows the dedication of the Secret Service and Delta Force to keep our nation's security as a high priority. Lou Merletti went on to become the 19th director of the Secret Service from 1997 to 1999. He is truly a patriot and is an example of the dedication of being in service to our country. This video was sourced from a book I highly recommend called Surprise kill vanish the secret history of cia paramilitary armies operators and assassins written by annie jacobson the link will be available in the description thanks for joining me do not forget to like and subscribe this really helps the channel with youtube's different algorithms i really like having discussions with my subscribers and viewers so let me know in the comments if you ever heard of this mission before and what do you think was going through the Delta operator's heads as they were flying towards the White House? Don't forget to check the description for some great deals. And I'll also be offering membership to my channel, which will include first access to the videos and members only live streams. If you are struggling, please call the National Mental Health Hotline at 988 if you need to speak to someone. We care about you. Also, there are links to some great organizations supporting our veterans in the description.